and 3. And I call the Assistant Minister. I move that the message be considered immediately. The question is that the message be considered immediately. All those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The Minister. I move the that the amendments rise. made by the Senate in place of amendments numbers 2 and 3, disagreed to by the House, be agreed to. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone that participated in this debate, except for the Senate. And I want to say, firstly, to our good friends in the Australian Greens over there, I want to say those economically responsible people in the Australian Greens, the member for Melbourne who are here in this House, uh, they have shown how genuinely you can work in the Senate to negotiate a package of measures through the Senate to ensure that Australia has some of the strongest anti-avoidance measures in the world. It's Australia that is leading the way in this way. I want to say to the Australian Labor Party, you were offered the chance to negotiate with the government. And the Shadow Treasurer would know that you were offered the chance to negotiate with this government measures that would ensure that multinationals pay their fair share of tax. And it was the Australian Labor Party that rejected the offer of the government to negotiate through a fair package of amendments uh, that would ensure that multinationals pay their fair share of tax. And I want to say, dear Mr Speaker, that this government is in charge of tax policy in Australia. We won't take ultimatums from the Senate. We won't take ultimatums from the Australian Labor Party. We certainly won't take, Mr Speaker, ultimatums from spivs in the Senate like Senator Dastyari. We certainly won't take ultimatums from Senator Dastyari. It's the Treasurer who met with the Mr. Australian Solomon. Tax Board the day after this bill came here last time the day after to ensure we had the right amendments. It's the Treasurer who met the next week with the ATO to ensure that the ATO were on board with the government's amendments. Proper process has been followed in relation to these amendments, Mr Speaker. All colleagues in this parliament can ensure and be, be absolutely 100 per cent convinced that proper process has been followed. These are sound changes, Mr Speaker, and I know that my colleagues are ready to listen to my remarks that I prepared here. We no I know a few short words, a few choice words I prepared, 20 or 30 minutes, nothing, nothing too onerous, just a few words that I'd like to say in support of these measures. Look, Mr Speaker, there's one thing that all Australians agree on, and that is that multinationals should pay their fair share of tax in Australia. Why would this parliament, why would any political parliament, party in this parliament propose that we leave here before Christmas without a package of measures that ensures that multinationals pay their fair share of tax. The Liberal Party agrees with that. The National Party agrees with that. The Australian Greens agree with that. There is one party in this parliament that proposes that we leave here before Christmas ensuring that multinationals do not pay their fair share of tax. That's the Australian Labor Party, Mr Speaker. The Australian Labor Party. In the fair dinkum stakes, Mr Speaker, Australia is a world leader in relation to multinational taxation. We're going to continue to work with our OECD and G20 partners. This is not the end of the story. We're going to continue to work with our OECD and G20 partners. We'll continue to take the lead in the OECD and the G20. But I want to say once again, it's a sad day for the Australian people. It's a sad day for the Australian Labor Party. Paul Keating. Paul Keating. Do you remember him? Do you remember him, Shadow Treasurer? Paul Keating, someone you might have modelled yourself on, Shadow Treasurer. Paul Keating would be rolling in his grave to see, to see his political grave, his political grave, to see the Australian Labor Party of today, to see the Australian Labor Party of today not willing to pass sensible amendments to multinational tax. Sensible amendments. It's a sad day when the Australian Greens are running Australian taxation policy and not the Australian Labor Party. And the Australian Greens. And while the government is happy and satisfied with the amendments, not every aspect of the amendments that have been passed by the Senate pleases the government. But that's the role of, pro that's the role of politics. As the Treasurer would know, and as you would know, Shadow Treasurer, that's democracy. That's democracy, Shadow Treasurer. The Senate has passed these amendments. The government will reluctantly agree to some of them, but we will agree to all of them because these are in the interest of the Australian people. This multinational taxation package will ensure that multinationals are paying the appropriate amount of tax from 1 January this year. I can't wait to hear the Shadow Treasurer's contribution because 
It will, it will, the onus will be on you to explain to your supporters. The onus will be on you to explain to the Australian people why you are holding this parliament back until 9.30 on the last day of the sitting year over multinational taxation, Shadow Treasurer. Stand up right now and tell us. Tell the Australian people. Tell everyone here. Tell the attendants. Tell the clerks. Tell the drivers. Why are we here at 9.30 on the last sitting day of the year over multinational taxation, over making sure that multinationals pay their tax, Shadow Treasurer? Tell us. The assistant minister's time has expired. Members on my right, members on my right, the member for McMahon. Thanks very much, Mr. Speaker. I just got a text from Paul Keating. He's not dead. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we knew the Liberal and the National parties were going to any length, any lengths to provide protection for large private companies to keep their tax affairs secret. But we've found out now there's a new coalition partner, the Australian Greens. There's the Liberals, there's the growing Nationals and there's the Greens, all in coalition to protect Australia's private wealthy companies. We know how we got here, Mr Speaker. The previous government knew that transparency reduces evasion. The previous government knew that one in five large private companies pay zero tax. The Liberal and National parties opposed our measures all the way. And then when they won the election, they had two strategies to kill that law. One was to claim that the law created a risk of kidnapping, the kidnapping defence, which was a complete and total fabrication. This was a complete and total fabrication, as was shown when they had to admit that there was no advice. And then we had the great community campaign, the AstroTurf campaign, this great groundswell of support to say, please get rid of these terrible laws. It turned out it was a complete and total fabrication, and the Senate was awake to it. The Senate knew that they had been set up, but now the conspirators who, who set up that AstroTurf campaign are laughing into their cognac because they have duped the Australian Greens, they have duped the Liberal and National parties. Today, Ian McFarlane joined the National Party and Adam Burnt joined the Liberal Party. That's what happened today in a great coalition to protect those who need little protection. Well, what we know is the Greens have struck a deal. They think they did a good deal. The leader of the, of the Greens in the Senate today said 95 per cent of something is better than 100 per cent of nothing. Well, guess what? They doubled the threshold. Now, that would be bad enough if that halved the number of companies who are captured by this change. That would be a terrible result. They might have thought that. I'll give the Greens the benefit of the doubt. That they might have thought they were simply halving the number of companies that are captured. What they did is reduce the number of companies captured by two thirds. By two thirds. Well done to the Greens Party. You managed to double the threshold and reduce the number of companies protected by two thirds. That's the sort of deal that the Greens negotiate on behalf of their supporters. No wonder they've been deluged with complaints from the Australian people today. The Greens have become the tax transparency traitors of Australian politics, joining with the coalition. At least the coalition's always been clear about who they represent, the big inner town. The Greens have pretended otherwise and they've been exposed. What they've done is shown that they are gutless, the gutless Greens Party of Australia, in coalition with those opposite, in a desperate play to deal themselves in. But in deal themselves in, they dealt away their principles. They dealt away everything they stood for. What they did is they joined with the assistant treasurer in his lovely green tie he's worn especially for the occasion for his new coalition colleague, the member for Melbourne, who should explain to the voters of Melbourne why he has worked with his colleagues in the Senate to protect Australia's biggest private companies, who have done a terrible deal on behalf of the Australian people. What they've done, what they've done is said that the government would not accept the amendments in the House. They said we have to give up. The Greens, the Greens put up the white flag, they said, because the government won't accept it. Well, why do we bother with Senate amendments? Why does the Senate bother? Why do the Greens senators turn up if every time they say, oh dear, the government might not accept our amendments? Oh no! Oh, no. The government, we just worked out. You know what? The Liberal and National parties have the numbers in the Green Room. So we better just fold and surrender in the Senate. That's what the Greens decided to do today because they realised. I saw the leader of the Greens say, 
I'll give you a lecture in how Australian politics works. The Liberal and National parties have the numbers in the House of Representatives. I say, therefore, we must bend to their will, according to the Greens. These quizlings of the tax debate who have decided to surrender tonight in a shameful effort, which has shown how they really operate. We know what the Liberal and National Party stands for. We know how they operate. They've always been clear about it. They are not for tax transparency. They are not for better tax collection from large private companies. They have never pretended they are, but the member for Melbourne has. Senator Di Natale has. We know that there is a Greens revolt on about this issue, and says there should be. We know that it's not just honourable members opposite who are tired and emotional tonight. Members there are also right. Greens who are angry, as they should be, as they should be. And it's a countdown to your defeat. Members on my right will cease interjecting. Members on my right will cease interjecting. The member for Melbourne. Because of the amendments the Greens secured in the Senate, Australians will now be able to know how much tax 7 Eleven pays. And Labor said no, we don't want Australians to know how much tax 7 Eleven pays. Because of the amendments the Greens secured Members in the right. Senate, we will now know how much tax the multinational world's biggest coal miner Glencore pays. They generated $15 billion in revenue and paid no tax in Australia. The Greens were able to secure amendments and stare down the government and say, we want this published and we have got it. And Labor has said, we want to keep secret how much tax the multinational company Glencore pays. Because of the amendments the Greens secured in the Senate, we will know how much tax over 280 private companies, many of whom had their tax arrangements kept secret by the Labor government under Paul Keating, now we will know how much tax they pay. Because of the amendments the Greens secured in the Senate, we will be able to know how much tax some of the wealthiest private companies in Australia that donate to the Labor and the Liberal parties how much tax they pay. We have secured these amendments. We secured the Senate inquiry that said it is a disgrace. It is a disgrace that in Australia people do not know how much tax these multinational companies and these private companies pay. They said we need to amend our taxation laws so that private companies in Australia are no longer able to hide their affairs. And we need to amend our tax laws so that companies can't hide behind uh, general have to file general purpose accounts instead of filing special purpose accounts. And now we have got it. And we have wound back some of the secrecy that Labor imposed, and we are on our way to having a, having a well-informed debate in this country about how much tax people pay. And what I want to just remind the House of a, of a very interesting article that gives the lie to the confected outrage that we've heard for the last afternoon from the Labor Party. Michael West in The Age says this, Labor too had worked hard to legislate these amendments. Their angst was understandable. In political terms, it was, as the chairman of the inquiry into corporate tax avoidance, Sam Dastyari, framed it a treacherous compromise. Before he had a laugh and conceded the outcome was not too bad. Before he had a laugh and conceded the outcome was not too bad. And so outraged was Labor about this that they sent an email around to all of their members saying, call the Greens and complain about it. And when people called us and we explained that because of these amendments there will now be over 280 of the wealthiest Australian companies who have to disclose how much tax they have to pay, and because of this multinational companies will have to explain how much tax they have to pay, we kept a record. 95 per cent of the Labor callers who called us have now said, that's great, we're going to vote Greens as a result of it. So thank you very much Members for that campaign. Right. And so confected is Labor's outrage that when it came to it in the Senate about an hour and a half ago, when it came to it, they didn't even call a division. They didn't even call a division to vote against this bill. And I bet you wait and you see, they'll put up a, a half a fight against these amendments and then they'll let this bill go through as well. Because Labor knows, Labor knows in their heart of hearts that what we have achieved is now 
is now more than 280 Australian companies have to tell the population how much tax they have to pay, and multinational companies for the first time are going to have to disclose Member how much Lawler. tax they have to pay. And what we know, what Lawler. we know is that when they have to tell the Australian people how much tax they have to pay, the Australian people, like they've done in the UK, will say, well, that's not enough and we want more. And when people know how much or how little tax these wealthy companies are paying, when the people know how little tax, they will say, well, we don't want a GST. Let's make multinationals pay their fair share. Instead of having a GST, let's ask multinationals to pay their fair, of their fair share of tax. Because that is what the Greens believe in. Tax reform should start at the top, not at the bottom. It should start with multinational companies. It should start with making them disclose how much tax they have to pay. And when people know how much tax they have to pay, we won't be having a debate about a GST anymore. We'll be saying, let's make the top 1 per cent pay their fair share, and the Greens will have contributed towards that. Member for Solomon Dobell, Bass and Lyons will resume their seats. The Minister, the Assistant Minister has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. As reluctant as I am to interrupt that outstanding monologue on the Australian Labor Party, I move the motion be put. The, the question is, the question moved by the Assistant. Members on my right will cease interjecting. The member for Lawler and the member for Newcastle will cease interjecting. The member for Isaacs. The motion moved by the Assistant Minister is that the motion be put. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. for Foreign Affairs will resume her seat. Photography is not allowed in the chamber. The member for Lawler will not interject when she's out of her seat. David. The member for Hughes, the member for Hughes, the member for Hughes will cease interjecting.
Lock the doors. The member for Gorton. I'm trying to address the chamber. The, the member for Barker will cease interjecting. I'm trying to address the chamber. I realise that 94A is not fully effective at this time, but I can name someone and will be here a bit longer. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the nose to the left. The question is that the motion be put. I appoint the members for Braddon and Parks, tell us for the ayes, and the members for Lawler and Shortland, tell us for the nose. Member for Bendigo will cease interjecting. Member for Griffith. Member for Griffith. The member for Griffith. The member for Bendigo. Take the boots off. The member for Hunter on a point of order during the division. Speaker, given parliamentary privilege doesn't apply during divisions, is it appropriate for the titular member of the National Party to be recruiting Greens to his party during a division? The member for Hunter has no point of order. It was funny. It was 
funny. <laughs> Order, members on my right, members on my left. Let's keep moving. The result of the division is eyes 80, nose 33. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The question now is that the amendments made by the Senate in place of amendments number two and three, disagreed to by the House, be agreed to. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. I think the ayes have it. No, division required. Ring the bells for one minute and I appoint the same tellers as per the previous division. Lock the doors. The question is that the motion be agreed to. The eyes will pass to the right of the chair, the nose to the left. Order. The result of the division is eyes 79, nose 33. The question is therefore resolved in the affirmative. The Leader of the House. You got an early mark. Mr Speaker, even so, there are so few Labor members still here, but I still move that the House do now adjourn. Yeah. And I thank everyone for their forbearance. The House stands adjourned. Oh. If members could just resume their seats. The question is that the House do now adjourn. All those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The House stands adjourned until Tuesday, the 2nd of February 2016 at 12 noon. <laughs>